first off, let me say thanks everybody for joining us tonight. I know we've got a few more people who are gonna be joining us because um, I've gotten some texts uh, that people are trying to get in, but we're gonna get started right away and we'll be recording uh, this as well. So I just wanna say, um, you know, it really is a great time for this company because the need and the demand for what we have is something that's really tremendous right now. You know, I was looking just even a little bit earlier at some of the 7K Advantage discount programs and the travel deals. And I was just looking at some different hotels that were available and I compared them and it, I was blown away by literally the difference in price. So we've got an amazing value here. And uh, it's something that so many more people need to know about. Gold and silver obviously is our, our main focus with both the Sound Money wallet as well as also the uh, stack and sell and the collectibles and all that. And there's so much that comes along with this membership that sometimes it can get confusing, it can get overwhelming. And I know the gentleman that, um, and when we, when we get all that knowledge, we tend to just spout that knowledge at some of the people that we might be wanting to share it with because we just want them to see what we've seen. We want them to really experience what we've experienced. Well, this gentleman that I'm gonna introduce is a gentleman that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Uh, I remember seeing uh, Mr. Fred Duff back in, it was 2002. I remember that because I was just getting started really in this industry. I mean, I've been in the industry, but not really had any success. And so that was the year that I really started learning and understanding it. And I remember going down to, uh, I was it was an event in Maryland at the time and Fred got up and spoke and he told his story and it was an incredible story. And it was so real and so genuine and it touched my heart. And I was like, ever since then, I wanted to get to know him and I did get to know him. And I got to tell you, Fred and I were not on the same team, and yet he was flying to Maine to help us to spread the word about our company with zero benefit for himself, none, just because of the good-hearted servant leader that he is. I mean, what a great person. And so, um, you know, he's, he's just mastered it, really keeping it simple and fun. And so I think we all can learn a lot from him, and uh, I'm going to, what? I know, I'm just saying all kinds of new faces. Oh, Love yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, I want to say welcome everybody too. Thanks for joining us, you guys. This is uh, this is great. We want to get uh, record numbers as much as we can because the information and the message, especially the one you're going to hear tonight, is going to be touching. So, Mr. Fred Duff, I actually I just saw him just get up for a second. So I'll extend his invitation just a little bit longer. I'm here. I, I was blinding myself with my own light. I just, I was, so my God, man, what is it? Where's that coming from? I thought the sun was rising on me or something. I don't know. Video, I apologize. No, we appreciate you. So everybody, I want to welcome Mr. Fred Duff. I want you to really listen and learn, and I'm sure you're going to laugh a lot too. Well, thank you so much. I love this couple like you cannot believe. They're, they're, they're the finest out there. I often say they're simply the best, and I believe that. I'm, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it, and they are just awesome. So 7K is one thing I can tell you what I've noticed. They've got some extraordinary leaders and uh, servant leaders. And that's hard to find in this industry. I, I can tell you that uh, most people want to know what's in it for me. And it, listen, you should know what's in it for you. But, you know, I learned from a guy that I never worked for. I listened and read his books, Art Williams saying, he always said, push up to go up, push someone else up so you can go up. And that stuck with me when I read that book of his pushing up to go up. I was not in his company, never did join his company. It's interesting, though, he sold the company a few years later, and John Addison, which you've had the great privilege to share the stage with, Mark, uh, um, he ended up taking the company over, and next thing I know, I, I got to go train that company all over the country, and that was, that was, just, that was just like mind-boggling to me. I said, a little girl, boy like me out of Saltville, Virginia, so thank you for giving me the privilege, and, and I'm going to do my best to, to stay within a short period of time here. I, I've always got to say, and if you talk long, you're probably going to talk wrong. A little bit about my background here. I'm, I'm actually uh, from a little town in, in Virginia called Saltville, Virginia. Uh, I, I was born in a little uh, part of that section town called Poor Valley. I, I hate the name of it then. I hate the name of it now. Every time I pull up in Saltville, which was just a couple weekends ago, and I had to make a left-hand turn to go back to the old home state, I said, I curse you, Poor Valley. I don't like the name. Uh, I'm po no mo. That's what I like to say. So anyway, I'm married, got a beautiful family. I'm just telling you what's the truth. I, got, I, I couldn't ask for a finer wife and, and, and children. I'm telling you, God has blessed me uh, beyond uh, uh, imagination. I want to talk a little bit about 
what this industry, I, I know we, we could talk about 7K, the seven steps, and we can do well, so many things we could talk about. What I want you to do tonight is I want you to kind of relax a little bit if you can. Because I want, I don't, I, I was at the convention recently and I heard a lot of chatter, a lot of talk, none of it negative. But what I come to realize, so few people really understand what this industry can provide for you. I'm convinced without a shadow of doubt, a background again was, you know, I came from a little town. In fact, they just got their first stop like five years ago. Uh, people think it's leftover Christmas tree lights and they don't pay any mind to it. They just drive right on through, man. It's the craziest thing you ever see. And so it's just a, you know, a population 1,375. You know, that's, they ain't a bunch there. I had more people in one of my legs in the last company than they had in the whole city. You know, so there we go. But I grew up there. My parents were good parents. You know, they had the, we all have difficulties in life. But long story short, I came home in the seventh grade and uh, my dad had been gone for quite some time. He was a professional musician. And listen, I have no ill feelings against any of my parents. I want you to make sure you understand. I've grown to understand things I did not understand then. But I came home in the seventh grade and, and my mom was gone. And my two sisters and I became street kids. And we had to figure this thing out. We knew if we told anybody, Danielle, we knew if we told anybody, the system would come in and separate us. And we figured it out. Now, of course, we, we couldn't get away with that today, today's time with technology and speed. And it, it, it took them over a year to evict, to repossess the home. Because in those days, when a warrant, a debt was served, the person you were serving had to be there to sign. She was gone. And nobody was signing anything. Now, we didn't have power some of the times. We did have water because it was a well. Uh, that we could pump out if we wanted to pull off a lid, but it was difficult, but you know what? We made it. And God blessed me with the, the gift of being able to just, I had a desire, I had that little baby sister. I felt like we needed to take care of. And so when seventh grade is the highest I went, I went right out of the seventh grade into being a labor apprentice boy in the masonry industry. And I laid brick up to about the age of 35. Now, listen, there's no shame in that game, but let me tell you one thing. Uh, I, I used to tease the bricklayers, and, and then it dawned on me what I was looking at. I'd look down on the wall, and I'd say, look at that old goat down there. He, he's got to be 100. He's, he's got to be 100. He was 35. He just looked 100 because of what the industry did to them physically. And I knew then that I had to find a way to get out of that ditch. I began to pray, and I said, God, I had a baby boy and raising a niece. I had my, my hands were full like everybody else. And, and I was trying to figure this thing out. I was working, laying brick during the day. It was during the Jimmy Carter era. And I put Mr. Carter down, President Carter. I'm just telling you, it was tough. Uh, it was tough. Uh, I was pumping gas uh, five nights a week at a gas station from 6 o'clock to 10 p.m. And then I would drive four nights a week to a hospital, a, a mental health hospital, and play parking lot security guard until 5 a.m. and drive to the job site every day. I did that because you got to do what you got to do. But one thing I knew, though, no matter how hard I worked, Mark, Daniel, it looked like I was just falling behind in life. Nothing was working out. It looked like the more money I made, the more it bled out of the household. It was more than I needed. and I mean, there was more needs than it was money, if you all know what I mean. And I felt like a failure as a father. I felt like a failure as, as a husband at the time. I just felt like an absolute failure. And you're going, what has any of this got to do with this industry? I'm going to tell you, it has everything to do with this industry. Absolutely everything. Somebody gave me a cassette tape. If y'all too young to remember that, but it was a way of listening to things. And I listened to this cassette tape a guy gave me from Zig Ziglar. And it changed my whole world. It, 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 it finally told me who I was. Zig talked about we were sons and daughters of the most high God. And I sat there on that scene that block that day and weeped like a baby because I knew I wanted to be somebody, but I felt like a nobody. This industry is the most extraordinary business model in the world. It lets a nobody, a somebody with no possible hope of going anywhere as a great job or anything, seventh grade education, dyslexia like you cannot believe. These two have to put up with my text messages. And today, every once in a while, they'll text me back, or oh, you'll crack again. I'm telling you, I'm a mess, but I found a way to get it done. I, I pray for the patients that, Lord, I know why it's taking four hours for them to get back to me. They're trying to decode it, <laughs> but that's just the way it is. That's who I am. So I knew I was never going to go in corporate America as some executive. I, you know, I had some struggles. And so long story short, you know, I always felt like 
uh, an ordinary. Every place I went, I felt ordinary. I was so scared to open my mouth because whatever come out my mouth, I, I, I mixed up my word, words, as they say. I, I was just all jacked up, toe up from the floor up. And I always felt bad. And then that cassette changed my whole world. So I didn't know who Zig Ziglar was. It's not like we had the internet at that time. So I went to my local library and I said, do you have a guy by the name of Zig? I thought maybe he had a book on to get some notes to sex. They had never heard him. They searched him. They didn't have it in their little Fisher files, none of that. So I come up with an ideal. I said, every night when I was pumping gas, here's what I do, Mark. When I'd stick, how much tonight? And I'd fill a car up or whatever. And I'd go, by the way, let me ask you a question, if you don't mind. Have you ever heard of a guy named Zig Ziglar? And, it, and every night in every car for weeks, I did that. And finally, this car come in one night. The steering wheel was on the wrong side of the car. I'd never seen a Mercedes Benz at that point in my life. Obviously, someone had shipped it from Germany or Europe over here. And the, and the guy was talking kind of odd, that European sound, you know, British sound. And I, and I was filling this car up. And I said, oh, by the way, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of a guy named Zig Ziglar? And he said, why do you ask? And I told him why. I said, I want to get some more of his cassettes, and I, I don't know where to find them. He says, what time you close up here tonight, son? I said, 10 o'clock. He said, I'll be here at 10 o'clock, and I'll show you not only how to get Zig Ziglar tapes, but how you might even get a chance to see him one day. I said, my God, this is unbelievable. He came back, and, and he got this big old board out on, on the sidewalk, and he's drawing these circles. He's in Amway. I had no desire to be selling no soap. I was a master bricklayer making a whopping $9,000 a year. A master bricklayer making nothing with my life. But he was showing those circles. And I said, well, I don't believe I want to do that, but can I just buy the, can I buy the tapes? He said, no, sir, you don't join the company, no tapes. Well, guess what I did? I figured out a way to come up with $125. And guess what I did? I joined that company. Now, I was main angry with this guy for a while. In fact, I never saw him again, but I got, I got, uh, connected with the right people in Richmond, and I started going to conventions. I started going to this, and guess what happened? Mr. Ordinary became started becoming working towards extraordinary. It's because of this industry. It, it takes a dud and lets him grow up to be a stud. It, it, it helped my mindset. Things that I wasn't taught as a kid. I'm not mad at my parents. They can't teach you something they didn't know. All you could do is what, what you got to work with. It, it took a guy like me who had never hardly been out of Virginia and allowed me to go all over the world. I've been everywhere, folks. I, I, I can't tell you the places we've been. It, it allows a guy like me, the first year of my son's in college, and, 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 and talk to the counselor and let me write post-dated checks. I was a great salesman at that point to be able to get away with that one. But the next year, after my first year in that full-time network marketing, I'd been in Airway and multiple companies, and they failed, they failed, I failed, they failed. I, I got a few companies where they're supposed to send me a check, and, and they sent me product. I said, I didn't order product. I, I, I was looking for a check. Well, we're out of business. We just sent you a voucher for product. Now, I've been through all of that. Where Everything looked like it was constantly failing, and every time one of those things went sideways, I felt more like a dud. But then all of a sudden, I would remember one of those cassettes that Zig said or someone else. And I said, well, I'm no dud. It's just the circumstances. I, I've got to work through it. i got to grow. And I kept growing. I kept reading and listening and being a student of the industry. And, and then, like I said, I sent my son to college, and they wanted this big money that I didn't have. And it was a private Christian school. No time At that time, you could not get a loan for Christian schools. It was against the law. So I, I begged and pleaded, and they said, okay. But the interesting thing. One year later, after this being introduced to this industry at the right company at the right time for that era of time, uh, I, I called that counselor the next year and I said, well, my son's ready to come back. She's well, Mr. Duff, how many checks you want to write this year? I said, I don't know. How much is the money? How much is the tuition this year? She said she rattled off a number. I said, how's one check sound? I'm telling you, Mr. Ordinary became extraordinary, and he could write a check for one whole year and not think about it. I'm telling you, it made my dream. I was strutting around like a rooster, man. I'm telling you, I felt good. You know, my number one goal, Mark, was not to make a lot of money. This may surprise a lot of people. When I got in and started making some money with that company you and I were with, my number one goal is I never owned a pair of shoes that came from a department store high end of any kind. I, all of my shoes as a kid came from Salvation Army, and I knew where they come from because I went in there and tried them on. I, I wasn't ashamed. It's what my mama could do. It's what we could do. But I always wanted my kids had good shoes. 
but I never did. And I remember one day, I, I just it was a, it created a, a psychological issue with me of having high end shoes. One day I said, I've had enough. Mister Ordinary is going to go get some extraordinary shoes. And I, I can't remember the name of the place. It's a high end place today. So where's the Richmond? I don't remember the name of it. And so I'm looking at all these shoes, man. I'm excited out of my mind. And this guy came over to me, the shoe salesman rep, and he said, Well, um, if you, have you decided on a pair yet? And I said, No, sir, I haven't. And he said. Will it be credit or will it be cash? And I said, well, it's going to be cash days. He said, well, then go ahead and pick you a pair. See, he assumed because I was looking at $150, $200 pair of shoes that if I was going to put it on a credit card, I could get what I want. But if I'm paying cash, I'm, I said, man, what's the matter with you? Box all four up. I, I remember pulling up in the parking lot. My son was home for school, and I'm blowing the horn mark. It's going on. I mean, I've got the flashers going on, man. I'm putting on, and I come running out the street car, I got a big old bag in one hand, a big bag in the other hand, I got a black shoe on my right foot, I got a brown shoe on my left foot, and I'm running through the park, and I'm screaming, Daddy got some shoes, Woo! Daddy got some shoes, I'm telling you, Rick Blair didn't have nothing on me that day, I had me some shoes, Mark, I had me some shoes, and it changed my world, see, this industry takes ordinary people, and if you become a student, you, be you can become extraordinary. I'll never forget the first time we went to Cancun, Mexico. It, it, it was mind boggling for me because remember, I come from where? Saltville, Virginia, uh, in a little valley called Poor Valley. The idea of going to some exotic place and put something on your arm and, and eat until you die. I mean, I almost ate myself into a coma there. I'm telling you what's the truth. It was 24 7 and I, a day. I mean, I was eating still on enough desserts for me, man. I was tearing it up. I was having a great time. Listen, all the problem, I ate so much I couldn't float anymore. I had to stay out of the pool. But my son and I decided to go to this high-end, uh, five-star, all-day spa. It, it was the craziest thing we ever did. So here's these two country pumpkins. And here, my son's far better than me. But we get there. And, and of course, the first thing they do is put us kind of like a steam room to kind of open up your pores. He said, no, 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 no. And then he took us in this big, this, this room, and they laid us down, and it was a uh, and, and they wrapped us in seaweed, Danny. Danny. I mean, seaweed. I'm thinking something like it, it's hot as it can be. And I, so I kind of peeked over at my son. I said, I don't know whether to try to make us look good or cook us. What do you think? You know, I just didn't know. I, I'd never experienced anything like that. And then he took to this thing called hydrotherapy. I, I didn't even know what hydrotherapy meant then. Barely know now. I just know there's some water involved. And so we're standing there and Water comes from every possible human direction underneath. I went, whoa, not there, bro, not there. I mean, it was crazy. So they clean us up and take us out on a private island. And, and now we're going to get our private 90-minute massage. Now, I slept through the entire thing. I'm just telling you the truth. All I remember is that girl touched my neck, and that was it. I was gone. I, I was sleeping like a baby. All I know, she said, sir, it's time for you to get up. Missed the whole thing, but I must have felt pretty good to be asleep like that. Here's the great thing, Mark. When I stepped out the door, my son's got tears coming down his eyes. And he says, Dad, I can remember. I can remember you had nothing. People called you a zero, but you're my hero. I'm telling you, this takes this business, lets ordinary people like me become a hero with their own children. My son loved me and respected me, but he saw me work and my hands bleeding. And he saw me working like a dog, but not getting anywhere. And just trying over and over again. And he kept, you know, everybody asked, why do you keep reading those books? Why do you keep going to those conventions? Because I wanted to become a somebody for my family. And I'm telling you, folks, I know everybody on this phone has been through some extraordinary difficulties and if you'll stick and stay here you will come out of this thing plug in start dreaming turn on your dream machine again man i'm telling you what this industry can provide anything you want if you turn on the dream machine and, and you may have to you're gonna lose some friends on the way i'm just telling you how it is guess what i love them anyway and ain't nothing they can do about it but it doesn't bother me because i still cash the check See, I cashed a check, and I didn't get caught up in what they thought I should be doing. Well, you're a master bricklayer, mister. Well, yeah, but you're disabled, and I'm not now. See, I, I, I've been, I haven't had a job, and I don't know, Mark, I quit counting. I don't know what a job is like anymore. I, I, I'm unemployable. I, I couldn't work anywhere for anybody. I don't know how to get up on time when they want me to be there. I just know how to do what I want because I went from ordinary to extraordinary.
And guess what? This industry, with what's happened in the last couple of years, especially 7K, it's so ripe if you would just quit trying to figure out how to become an expert in coins and turn on your dream machine and start reaching out people you know who they're feeling bad. They, they know they're not going to be able to put their kids through school. They're struggling. Uh, maybe they live in a neighborhood that, that, that really is the hood. Uh, maybe, maybe they just want to change their address. So an extra $500 a week or $500 a month can change a lot of people's life. Start looking for the ordinaries and see if you can't help them become extraordinaries. This industry can provide anything you want if you stay diligent, you don't quit, and you stick and stay. I promise you, you'll eventually get your pay. But more importantly, it's what you become in the process. It's who you get to meet and run around with. That's more important. I've got friends. I believe, Mark, you and I, uh, on a dime's notice, could go to any state and get a, and our flights get canceled for two days. We could open up our phone book and people would put you and me up in their home and be excited we're there. Why? Because it took a couple of ordinary fellows like us and this young lady and made us extraordinary. We developed friends and people that we care about all over the country. So, ladies and gentlemen, here are my last thoughts on all this because I probably talked too long. I, I'm just telling you, man. Uh, seventh grade education, dyslexia like you can't believe, didn't learn to really read until my son was in the first grade. They taught me memorization. It would take me 45 minutes to read a paragraph and think and go rich, and I couldn't tell you a single word that I read. And then he got it. My son, see this, see, put me in a position where I put him in private school because I didn't want him growing up like me. And, and he learned phonics. And so I was teaching, doing his homework with him every night. And guess what I got to learn? I got to learn how to pronounce words and learn to read. And it, and it opened up my world so that when this opportunity came, I was ready to receive it. I hope you're ready to receive it yourself tonight. And listen, you're going to get knocked around, beat up. Man, sometimes I feel like Rocky. I don't know what anybody says. Everybody says. We've had that moment where you got your eyes are swollen, your friends and your family is putting you down. And even your manager, you know, your closest friend is going, you know, Rocky asked his manager in the locker room, says, hey, 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 Mick, you, you think we got a chance? And Mick goes, he's got a crush hate, you bum. What kind of encouragement is that? What kind of encouragement is that? And his eyes all swollen and he can't see, but he's calling out the one name that's stuck behind him. Adrian! Adrian! See, see, that's all we got to do is stick around, man. And we're going to win the championship, whether you got a good support team at home or not. Because whether they're saying the bum's going to crush you, it doesn't matter. Do you have a dream big enough and a desire to become extraordinary in this business? Because I'm telling you, 7K and this leadership can help you get there. Back to you, folks.